Are you a prepper or homesteader looking to connect with like-minded people in your area? Looking to start your own preparedness group? Already have a group? Well, look no further than PrepperNet. PrepperNet is dedicated to personal responsibility, individual freedoms, and being self-reliant. PrepperNet has monthly meetings in over 100 cities where you can meet and learn with like-minded people in your area. PrepperNet, where preppers unite. Find us online at PrepperNet.com. Survive. Thrive. Stay alive. It's time to get prepared with the Prepping Academy Podcast. Hey, good evening, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is when you listen to this podcast. Welcome to the Prepping Academy. I am Forrest. We have Uncle Buck. Hello, hello. In the house. In the yes, house. sir. Oh, I yes, like sir. that. <laughs> and today is going to be amazing. Before we get to that, how was your week? I mean, it's, you know, weekend's over. We, we record these on Mondays. And so weekend's over. And um, how was your weekend and your week? And Good, man. Um, you know, overall, super productive. The um... So I think I was, I was telling you maybe... A couple weeks back, I applied for that. Uh, Chad Wright, U.S. Navy SEAL, right? Mm-hmm. He does a, a program called I think it's called it's called Three of Seven. Um, but he does a it's like a basic course, and then I think it's like an advanced course, and there's some some other stuff that goes on. Um, there's eight spots. I got an email saying I got one of the eight, so I am going to be heading to it. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. It's going to be super intense. I, I already know, I can already anticipate that. So. I'm just up in my, um, my training and just making sure that I'm physically in good condition before heading out to that thing. But I'm, I'm stoked about it. It's going to be three, three days. They send, um, they'll send me a package and then we do like a, um, like a call before, uh, I think like a week prior and they send me a package of everything. Here's all the gear to bring, um, uh, how to dress all that fun jazz. So they'll, they'll, to me but yeah i'm pretty pretty excited about it a little bit nervous but um that's a good thing it's like you're gonna be out of my comfort zone but it's, it's all good i'm looking forward to it though it's um it, it'll be fun but everything else good man i mean yeah just going to town just going to town yeah, yeah i was accepted it. to that too um and <laughs> <laughs> hey you know I, i'm looking forward to it now what is it we're accepted to <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound fun. It is not it's uh, fun. fun. <laughs> uh, it'd be a lot of land nav. I think it's going to be a lot, you know, land nav, a lot of mm-hmm. uh, preparedness stuff, some tactical movements, um, a lot of bushcraft stuff as well. So, I mean, it, it, it's right in our wheelhouse, right? Stuff that we do on, on yep. you know, prepper camp and all that fun jazz. But it, it, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I was I was talking about the meetup. For Krispy Kreme donut lovers, that's oh, not okay, what, okay. that's not what you're talking about. No, 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 that's not it. That's not okay, it. Okay, because they accepted. Event. <laughs> okay, they accepted me. We have a big event coming up, and your VIP, I, your VIP I, now. <laughs> and I'm trying to prepare for that now as well. So, uh, uh. <laughs> but um, uh, the weekend. I mean, you said you went ice skating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, kinda... yeah, took out, um, yeah, we were talking on b- before we went live here. Yeah, did some ice skating. So that was fun. That's fun. Um, Always. Yeah, nice, cold, but it was, yeah, it was cool. Um, ran into some, some ex Navy guys that I used to work with before. So, so yeah, it was cool getting, getting See, to catch up with them. So that's weird that you run into ex military Navy guys at the ice skating. Take, just... taking, taking the wives there. That's it. Just okay. taking the wives. It's a good date night or good, good date, date night. night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, my family went out of town, so that was. I told you I was. I was. I put my bug out bag, my get home bag, all these bags out, and I was going to go through, organize, and make sure I had the right stuff in there, make sure everything's good. And I started going through one, and I'm like, "It's good. I haven't really touched it." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I pulled the other bag, and I'm like, "I know this one's good because I've already prepared it for winter. It's good." And so I'm like, well, what am I going to do now? I was expecting to do a few hours on that. So I've been, um, so I worked on my book. It's getting ready, getting ready to be released here soon. I worked on that, getting the cover 
getting the the, the audio is being made right now. Uh, the guy's reading it, recording. I didn't want to do my own voice because I don't know. I'm one of them realistic guys. I, my, I, I don't listen to my voice at all. Do you ever listen to the, our podcast to see how? Yeah. See, I, I can't do that. I can't. I, 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 yeah, I don't. I listen to it and I'm like, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't even like how I sound. Um, yeah, I don't sound, <laughs> I don't know. Got to get the, uh, the guy that did the opener to, uh, to the show, like have him read the book. Yeah, well, I mean, he'd, yeah. he'd just be jazzed up the entire time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I did go. So I, I, I seem to go with a new guy every time, but this guy is pretty good. He's reading it kind of slow, asking to speed it up a little bit. But the great thing about audiobooks is so easy to jack that up to speed. Mm -hmm. So the way he's reading it, I actually put it in the software so I could jack it up. And it sounds great at like 1.5. I mean, those that speed theirs up, his is going to sound, they're going to love this guy reading it. So he's very clear in his speech. And so, so he's done the first two chapters or so. He's going to do two a day for the next okay. like 12 days or so. And there's 24. Oh, he's going to do on the weekend. He'll do. Yeah. But anyway, it'll be about a week before he's finished. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, today, you know, I just went through my everyday carry a little bit and switched some things out. Got new chapstick. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's it. That's an EDC. <laughs> <laughs> Got new chapstick. That was a big decision. Uh, switched to a new 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 brand. But anyway. what's your what what is your EDC like? Typically, what what do you run with? I always have um, a Glock thirty eight. Mm -hmm. I always have a Corumbic knife. Yep. Pull, pull out my pocket. It self deploys. Um, I have a flashlight, uh, chapstick, uh, my cell phone. And then, depending on what I'm wearing, I have a belt that, in I, I'm like, like people can watch me, but my belt is one of my. I call it my stop, my spy belts. Mm -hmm. So I can put things with inside the, the, the actual belt it has zippers. Okay. And, but it's a leather belt. It's a good heavy belt. And I have like handcuff, handcuff key, water purification tablets, um, some, all kinds of little stuff in there. If you watch my spy tech video, I, I go through exactly what's in my belt. Uh, and that's, that's, yeah, I, I, my goal was to start carrying at like a uh, a tourniquet mm -hmm. or some kind of first aid kit, maybe around my ankle. But it's kind of yep. I don't I have I don't I I got it, but it's I haven't started wearing it yet. But that's pretty much my my thing, my gun, all that. I went through that. Yeah. yeah How about yeah. you? What do you carry? Uh, like typically EC nine, right? Like a little Ruger EC nine, um, mm -hmm. or or nineteen Glock nineteen. Those are like those are my two go to. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, then then this similar type items, right? Flashlight in there, uh -huh. uh, not the chapstick. I don't. I don't, typically don't carry the chapstick, but <laughs> <laughs> it's important. But that, yeah, <laughs> but then a uh, small little um, flip knife, uh, flip knife as well. Something to like to deploy, uh, uh -huh. and then just carry carry that on one side of my body, at the pistol on the other. So, um, yeah, it's a weird world. It's a strange world. It's getting stranger by the day. You gotta yeah. you gotta be prepared. And don't you, didn't you say you carry about $5,000 in cash? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually like spread all throughout my body. <laughs> just want people to know that. You just, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a giant vest. It's a giant vest. The dollar bills are sticking out of it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Awesome. Awesome, dude. So um, you text me. We were like, what are we going to talk about? And man, one of the biggest things everyone's talking about, it's, it's on, I mean, I've, I saw like five podcasts or five YouTube videos today on it about food and the sort shortages. Yeah. It's getting crazy. So like what, what kind of triggered me on this whole thing is we're at the, uh, the local grocery store and, uh, they, they were limited to buying one dozen eggs. That was it. I mean, it was, wow. it was like, it was pretty sparse and they were limited to buy one because of the, um, uh, it's the avian flu or bird flu or whatever's, whatever's killing off a lot of these chickens. So now they've restricted that and you can only buy a dozen eggs at a time. And the, um, 
uh, yeah, it's just getting, uh, just getting super weird. And I, I, I follow and, and connected with some friends out in Chicago area and they're like, they run in and show pictures of their Aldi and it's just like shelves with a handful of items on it. And it's just, it's super weird. Um, so yeah, like, so, so yeah, I just want to like start bringing up the food aspects of it and like, what, it, what are some good foods to, to prep for, right? Cause not, not everybody has uh, the money to go, yeah, drop 1200 bucks or thousand bucks on, on freeze dried food. But if they have 20 bucks or something like that, what could, what could they run with the grocery store while it's still there and just keep it, um, you know, canned goods, anything like that grains, mm -hmm. um, what would be some good ideas? So that, that's really where it came from. And then like bigger picture, I started going in and, oh, oh, the, uh, the one thing that was kill, killing me was the, uh, I think it was NIH or Health and Human Services. They came out with the updated uh, food um, pyramid, right? Remember that food pyramid? Yes. They, came, they initially came out in the 80s and they're like, eat grains, eat grains, eat grains. And then there was this direct correlation between that and obesity. Like it just went straight up. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so the, their track record is not, not great. But um, they came out with a new one that effectively it put like, it had like Lucky Charms on there. It had Frosted Flakes. It, had it literally says Lucky it said Charms. It, it said, yeah, there was, yeah, there was this this pyramid and it had the green, eat a lot of, uh, yellow, eat you know, moderate amounts, and then red was eat minimal. The last one on the list, the last one on the bottom, I kid you not, was ground beef. It says eat it, eat that like very, very sparingly, like no, no meat. They had, I think they even had powdered eggs above regular eggs it was super weird what yeah yeah you have to uh i'll, I'll message to you i'll find it and i'll message to you because well, it, it's a trip i will have to put the lucky charms at the top of the pyramid <laughs> i do agree with that because <laughs> i am five <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my goodness it was a lot That's of processed food though it was so much processed food and i mean a little bit of processed food is not, is not bad. Right. I mean, I don't, that's my take on it. I got friends that are like mm -hmm. strictly whole foods and they, that's all they'll eat. They don't do any processed foods. They don't even buy it, put it in the house. But, um, I yeah. I thought the table, the table was no, I don't remember any processed foods on the table before. Mm -hmm. I don't remember it either. We'll have to do like a, a, a before and after, like, like where was, was it? Cheese and eggs and milk mm -hmm. and they had dairy. cheese, dairy. They had almond milk, I think, above dairy milk. Okay, I do um, like almond milk, especially the sweetened. I, yeah, I do yeah. that. With lucky Put charms. that in the lucky charms. With, with yeah. the lucky charms. <laughs> <laughs> they must have. They must have built this thing. No, I was going to say they must have built it on what I eat, but no meat. Meat's at the top for me. So, yeah, uh, agreed, agreed. But it got got me like thinking about all of the. Like what is going on in the world right now, right? I mean, I looked at the the largest um, the largest landowner right now in the farm landowner right now in the U.S. is Bill Gates. So, um, not sure what he's what he's doing. I mean, a lot of folks have a lot of speculation on what he's doing, but I don't know. Can't can't confirm it. Um, but then you start looking at some of the top exporters out there of of food producers. Uh, particularly wheat, right? I was just looking at the, like, well, who, who produces all the wheat, right? It, a lot of it comes from the top five are number one is Russia in a war, the mm -hmm. EU, um, close to being in a war. Australia has gone completely bonkers. The U S we're not far behind. And then number five is Ukraine. Ukraine. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Small little country. Well, sizable geographically, but like not, a not a country you'd think of that produces and exports this much grain. Mm -hmm. um, so like all that stuff, there's downstream impacts on the supply chain, right? There's when, when uh, uh, issues happen, such as a war, um, it's going to definitely impact the, uh, the supply chain downstream. Uh, it's just a matter of time. The other thing that was going on um, was on the Netherlands. I don't know if you paid attention to anything going on uh, in the Netherlands with the farmers and their, their, actively protesting right yep I so saw it. yeah the government's trying to shut them down reduce their emissions it's, it's all about this esg um environmental social governance um esg consequently is the same the same um uh the same country that had esg score i think of about a 97 98 was some something ridiculously high with sri lanka 
in Sri Lanka over the summer, if you, if you recall that, um, and a lot of folks probably will recall it, the, um, the people revolted. They were having to ration gas. They were having to ration food. They, I mean, there were all kinds of crazy stuff. The people rioted. Um, the Sri Lankan native folks uh, rioted, started pulling out politicians from their homes, beating the crap out of them. Ultimately, um, the, the government just flatlined. I mean, they just they, they went up in smoke. The prime minister or the president, uh, I can't remember what it was called there, ended up, you ended up seeing videos of him fleeing. He had to like flee to get to, and then he ended up going to another country and had to resign his, <laughs> his, uh, his leadership uh-huh. role via email. So it's incredibly crazy, but that was the uh, the poster child for this all ESG that's going on. Um, and you saw the downstream impact there from fuel and for food. Um, it, it was just, I'm like, when is this going to just start trickling down here to 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 us, to Canada, to the U.S.? Um, so <clears throat> if you look, the last two years have not been good years for farmers and growing food. If you remember last two, two and a half years, China's had major flooding mm-hmm. You may, in the, the most fertile part of China, which is down near that dam that everybody says is going to break and it's hadn't broke yet. Um, it's the, you remember it's the world's largest dam mm-hmm. and major flooding um, and which destroyed a lot of their crops. So then they started actually buying wheat and grain from everyone else, more than they've ever bought before. And now Russia has kind of limited their exports. China is still having problems with their um, backlog and their their grains. And then Ukraine, there's not going to be any exports from Ukraine this year. You can't imagine anything. Ha- I mean, they're in a war. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and so there's major food issues <laughs> that are coming our way. Uh, and it, it's already here, but as soon as there's a run on it, it will destroy our supply chain. 100%. 100%. It hasn't been a run yet. There's a run on eggs, I guess, now. Um, and um, someone said they're over $5 a dozen. And that's just, I mean... It's That's, ridiculous. Bacon, it bacon's through the roof now. Um, the other, um, oh, there's another product too. Um, it's it's drawn a blank now, but the um, yeah, but hey, that, that impact that impact is it's pretty severe, right? Because mm-hmm. you're, you're starting at the source, and right. if things aren't, it, there's only so much stores that you have. Like what I mean by stores is just your backup, your reserves, um, and once that runs out, you're you're kind of uh, yeah, you got to be a lot more self-reliant or we'll talk about some of the ways that you can store up for this in case there is a, a, a downside um, coming here. The The other piece that, that I've noticed too is when we start buying stuff like produce, I don't know if you noticed this at all. And I've heard it from some other folks, I think on maybe Zello, when you're doing the Zello night is when you're buying fresh produce, it goes bad fast. Have you noticed that? Like it goes back like really fast. I, I, I don't buy produce. <laughs> Lucky charms. Lucky charms and all the milk. Lucky, well, well, hey, my wife does the shopping. So she just, uh, because if she takes me to the grocery store, we buy more. So she prefers to go by herself. So sorry. I'm not being a sexist here. She just didn't want me to go with her. No, all but, right. All right. Because I get the Lucky Charms. <laughs> the stuff she doesn't want you to eat. Right. I, Hey, let's take a quick break. Are you a prepper or homesteader looking to connect with like-minded people in your area? Looking to start your own preparedness group? Already have a group? Well, look no further than PrepperNet. PrepperNet is dedicated to personal responsibility, individual freedoms, and being self-reliant. PrepperNet has monthly meetings in over 100 cities where you can meet and learn with like-minded people in your area. PrepperNet, where preppers unite. Find us online at PrepperNet.com. But so I haven't noticed. That's my point there. Yeah, I will I, yeah. say this. We're not in trouble until Budweiser. <laughs> when Bud, Jim Beam when, and Budweiser runs when out. When Jim Beam and Budweiser is hard to get, 
that's when we're that's 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 when we're screwed. Mm-hmm. But some of the foods that you know I was looking through and and thinking, all right, well, where are some some foods that you can go purchase now, right? From a protein, like looking at macronutrients mm-hmm. by protein, carbs, and fats, uh, and then of course your fluids as well, right? Your water, your your juices. Um, and I keep seeing different, different things on here. Maybe you can shed some light on it. You know, canned meat, right? Canned chicken, canned uh-huh. tuna, um, stuff that's readily available. Peanut butter is a really good one. that doesn't go, lo- uh, go bad for a long period of time. Um, it's got a lot of good, uh, unsaturated fat, good protein, uh, and then beans, um, any kind of penny, uh, kidney beans, lentils, um, and then nuts as well are really good protein sources. I've seen jerky on a lot of, um, mm-hmm. recommendations as well. Mm-hmm. Cause that's, that's holds for a very long time and it's, it's a good source of protein, but what I, I've seen anywhere from three to five years. And then right. I've seen 20 years. Um, it, everybody is approaching it a little bit differently but what what is the what's the magic number if you buy it today will it last for what three years five years 20 well, years? It, dep- it, it depends but i'll i'll say this i consider myself a f- long-term stu- um, food storage expert absolutely i have so one of the things i do is consult with groups and we put together food plans for people and what they need to buy and what they need to store and all this. And, you know, in the Mylar bags and all that kind of stuff. So I consider myself a, a expert. It may be just me. But <laughs> so but um, I always start out with calories. Um, so I am assuming when the grid goes down, I'm going to eat somewhere around three to four thousand cal- calories a day. Mm-hmm. A lot of people will go, I mean, a or, or man's only supposed to eat 1,500 to, you know, 2,000. But when the grid goes down, uh, you're going to be doing a lot more work, mm-hmm. a lot more work than you're doing now. And um, so I, and I would always rather overestimate than underestimate. I don't want to run out of food. But so I, I count from about usually around 3,000 to 4,000 food for a, a male. And then you multiply 4,000 calories a day for a year. That's roughly 1.5 million calories you need. Okay. Now, if you're going to do around 3,000 calories, it's going to be roughly a million. Just it's there. It's, it's, you know, it's actually a million and 94,000. I mean, but just to give you some, so you need to start from there. So, The question to, I would ask most people, how much food do you need? How much food do you want? Another way you shouldn't ask it because people get offended is how long do you want to live? Mm -hmm. Because that's a legitimate question. How long, so how long you want to live? And they go forever. I'm like, well, let's, let's just, um, you know, let's just go for a year because I I tend to think that if a real grid down happens, you you're going to need three years of food. And the, and this, are you assuming no, no hunting? You're assuming no hunting, no gardening, none of that stuff. Just right a stockpile of food. And here and here and you know it's in my book, and I've talked this over with what I call true experts. Ninety five percent of the people that you listen to and you watch on YouTube, they have no clue. You got to go to people like Selco, these people that have lived in totally grid down areas for a long period of time. So the first year you hide. You, you, I mean, if you don't hide, you die. Mm-hmm. You hide or die. The second year you come out and you start growing your garden and you may do great, you may screw up. So you got to have, now we're at two years of food. Then the third year, you're hoping you're getting better, and then you can supplement some of the new food that you got. You can maybe capture some animals. You know, people on, I mean, when you talk about meat, go back to the 20s. The deer population was, I mean, 80% of the deer population was gone in six months. And it wasn't even a grid down. Mm -hmm. They literally, we're still, 
you know, moving deer and putting elk in the North Carolina mountains because everybody ate them all. So everyone, their brother's going to become a hunter. So you got to have your own food. And as soon as you kill, kill a deer, you're, let's say you're 30 days after the grid goes down, you kill a deer out in the woods, you're going to have five or six people tracking you down going, hey, what's going on? What did you shoot? They're coming, they're bringing their gun and now you got to share your food or be in an alter, you know, altercation with them. So I'm not, I don't put a lot of bets on finding food for hunting because when I go to Miami Beach, Florida, which is where my tr- retreat is, <laughs> <laughs> and I and I shoot something. I don't. I, I mean, I'm using literally uh, probably a 300 blackout or something with the with the suppressor on it, so no one no one hears me. And what, I'm gonna, uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, and so I'm going to have to, you know, 300 blackout, or well, I think we have a, a couple of long guns that can, but it, you can't suppress them too much because it needs that power. And so, but. That's why I'm raising rabbits. Rabbit is the miracle food. We got our our food we put aside and we're going to raise rabbits. Guess where the rabbits are going to live? Inside with us until in Miami. In Miami, we got places for it inside. They'll be producing and you just if someone stumbles on your property and sees rabbits and they run, you're screwed. They can go tell everyone. You can't afford to take that to take that risk. But um, I'll we'll get in. So, so what do you think? I mean, you, you agree with what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you, you got a lot more experience on this than I do. So, um, <clears throat> the and you've been doing it longer. Uh, so, I, one question that came up is when that year one, mm-hmm. assuming uh, assuming grid goes down and you go to hide uh, in Miami. Is the property under, is it underground? Is it above ground? Is it camouflaged? Is it just a compound somewhere? Like what what is that? I mean, what does that even, what what do you recommend? Above ground, below ground, moving Um, around? Well, I recommend, I don't like the below ground depression other things happen when you're below ground like depression and you've got to be amongst the property but you have to have the property secure that you you know if eyes are watching and there's ways to do that electric electronically even after the grid goes down so the people just imagine i mean i'm not my group again we've been together for 21 years but Money is huge in this. And I hate saying that. It just is. Mm -hmm. Um, There are people that have properties that, that, you know, they have cameras in Faraday cages in case the EMP goes off. They can just go and swap all the cameras out and be back up and running. I mean, I don't, we don't have, you know, that kind of, you know, uh, a system, but you just got to have eyes on everything you're doing from your own group to see what's going on and know what's going on around you. Uh, below ground just kind of bothers me. There's um, ventilation, there's space limitations there. Uh, and so we're above ground, but we just, when we, you know, when we pull the sand over the top as we go under the ocean, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but you just gotta be in a very, uh, I mean, you can handle, a group of 20 people coming up to your retreat. You can't handle a group of 300. That's why you got to be a far and far away from uh, population. Now, my friend Jonathan Holloman's writing a book. It's getting ready to come out in the next couple of weeks. He says, if, if you can see people from your retreat, you're, you're screwed. He goes, you've got to be I mean, in the middle of nowhere. Everyone can achieve that. He also kind of slammed people that, and you know, it made me mad, but he's so true. It was so truthful. He goes, there's no such thing as called an urban prepper. You can't, you can't require enough stuff. You're not going to survive in the towns. You Mm -hmm. don't have, you don't have the skills to do that. Rambo does. (laughs) And, you know, and 
people that will just snap people's necks off and they don't care. But ordinary people, they just don't have the skills to live in a city. After our, after the stuff hits a fan. Oh, yes. All heck breaks loose. So on that, you know, uh, taking a look at some of these items and this, this is what, you know, we focus on a lot of canned <laughs> stuff, peanut butter, um, canned tuna, canned chicken, canned peaches, beans, um, a lot of dry beans too, dry goods, dry rice. Um, and then just put, put those in, in five gallon buckets, uh, with the, um, with the oxygen absorbers. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, those are some of the, the items that we, we take care of. And then, you know, some freeze dried food as, as well, uh, to supplement that, but freeze dried food. I mean, it's, it's expensive. Uh, I've eaten MREs before too, like eating those long periods of time is just, it, it'll mess your gut up pretty good. You need Beano and x <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it is not great. Yeah. So here's what I do. First of all, everyone should have, I, I would say, three months of pantry. Just work on doubling, tripling your pantry. So if your kids eat bow ties, have three three to four months of bow ties. You want to live, when the crap hits the fans, you want normal things for your family as, as much as you can eat. And why not just save it and prepare it? And But just that's just your pantry, everything you eat, mm-hmm. except, you know. But then we do, we go into six months worth of freeze dried per person. Because once you, you leave the good stuff, you know, you know, the spaghetti, I mean, you can have a jar of spaghetti and some bow ties. I mean, that can, that's a good meal for many months. And then you, you, you do different things like chicken in a can and pasta with some Italian sauce. I mean, these are basic cheap meals that because that um, that spaghetti um, sauce lasts for a long time in a jar. And then um, so you just just think of three months of just eating normal food. Then you go into six months of freeze dried. Freeze dried is almost normal, but it's not. It tastes good, but it's just different. And so. That's why then you go, so so now you're at nine months buying six months worth of freeze dried for everyone. And you got three months of your pantry. And then you get into some of the things you're talking about is your grains, your rice. Um, some sites say get wheat. We don't use wheat now. We're not going to make, I mean. Bread, yeah. We need to, but that's just not our thing. We don't make bread now. Why are we going to make it then? You know what I mean? Get some beans, get some, a lot of canned tuna and just, just start storing things. And all of a sudden you can, I've read, um, there's a site you can get a year's worth of, um, one, a food for a year for one person is like a thousand dollars. That's salt. That's beans. That's rice. That is oil. It's a good deal. It's a really and, good well, deal. Well, you put it together yourself. It tells you to buy, you know, 300 pounds of rice. That's a lot of rice. 300 pounds of rice is, what, uh, 25 times, you mean, 50, $150. And then you get, you know, get some, you know, some sugar, put it in the bucket, freeze dried. I mean, a, you know, a Mylar bag in a bucket with oxygen absorbers, sell it up, some salt. Some, some, some like um, vegetable, which doesn't store very long. So, but, um, and you start just storing this stuff for a year, for you can get enough food for a year for one person, you know, some lentils. Um, they have a thing now. Oh, let's see if I have my notes from, um, yeah, it's, it's a new potato. Mm-mm, never heard it's, of it. This is a new potato. And it, there's a name for it. It is called, I may have, um, but it, it's a brand new potato that can absolutely multiply very good. It's very nutritious. Uh, I forgot the actual name of the potato, uh, but it, they're very good. And they can, so before, and they start out as seeds. Most potatoes, you actually have to like, you know, cut off the eye, let it grow, and then you plant that. 
these can grow from the mesi- the seeds and it's like a I, I, ha- I have seen this. I have, I, yeah, I've seen these. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the name. The name. I'll, I'll look it up real quick. Yeah, I can't find it now, but um, but get some of the seeds for the potatoes because th- you get a bell of hay and just. I mean, you can grow potatoes, a lot of potatoes. So my my plan for our group is we have everyone has food at their house. We got normal food for three months. We got freeze dried food. Then we got all the grains and things. Uh, beans, rice, lentils, but then you got to have, we have, we're going to be growing rabbits on our retreat. Rabbits are easy. They multi, they do what they're made to do and they multiply. Um, then you got to have seeds that will store so you can start growing. We don't have a garden on our retreat currently. We could, we've got lots of uh, land to do it on. We don't want anyone to see if they stumble or look at google earth see that we have a garden we want people to go there's nothing going on up there that's just an abandoned you know place right there next to daytona beach or yeah. miami wherever it is <laughs> we it just don't, there's no resources there and 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 they're looking today just know this um, so there's an area in, in North Carolina in the mountains. It's it's Asheville. A lot of a lot of homesteaders. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what a homesteader is? Mm-hmm. That has animals. That's tomorrow's supermarket. So when Asheville gets hungry, they're gonna go from one homesteader and kill all their animals to the next homesteaders and kill their animals. And they're just going to make their way from one supermarket to the other supermarket. Cause if you think you're a homesteader and you can, you've got cows, everyone knows you have cows. You got chickens running around your yard. You got pigs in the back. And people know that all your neighbors know that. And when they get hungry, they're going to go, okay, guys, there's a house right on the corner down there. It's about a half mile. I know they got like 30 cows. I've seen them. You know, let's get everybody together. Oh, we got what? Uh, there's 54 people. Let's go. The, they're gonna they're gonna die trying to preserve preserve their food on their own land. That's gonna be sad. Wow. Tomorrow's tomorrow's supermarket, and that's why we refuse to show any activity on our site whatsoever, and especially so the the rabbits and the chickens we're taking with us there are actually some there but they're inside of a a horse stable so no one knows that from cameras or anything like that from google earth yeah but the so so no clearing of land anything like that was ever done <clears throat> oh there's clearing of land absolutely we could okay. let, we could land a plane in there okay um and a helicopter um if you know the story of the last guy we recruited is a helicopter pilot um, and has two in his front yard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's part of the, he's part of the team in Miami. <laughs> he, yes, <laughs> we got to get. I got to get down there fast. You know, um, we got so many plans for that. It was. I mean, the first of it was to come get, you know, the families. But now there's so many other things that has to be done. We're just on our own to get there. He's got things to do. So he has a. His work is he flies a helicopter and parks it in the sky so people can work on equipment or towers or, or cables. But he's also got an EMP-proof 1964 Huey that is totally oh. EMP-proof that can go and do whatever. So he don't own them, but he just works for the company. Yeah, I've um, seen the EMP proof. Uh, what what is it? The year before, like 1984 or something, something like that, like, or 1986, yeah. Yeah. like the 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 Broncos, the four Broncos. Mm-hmm. And so, anyway, but that's way too much. Inf- I'm gonna have to kill you if I say any more. <laughs> well, uh, so so then um, recommendations, right? Because because there's some canned goods, there's some uh, rice. I mean, a, a lot of this is how you store it, but the what is the duration of this before it starts going bad? Uh, Cause I like I, the stuff I read, it, it's all over the, the, it's three years, two, three years, it's five years. It's, it's could last 20, 25 years. It's mm-hmm. kind of all over the show. What, what um, is it by category or like, what are you seeing or what have you, you experienced? Are you talking about the food? How long it lasts? 
Yeah, like canned goods. Right, like if you right. just buy canned goods right now, like how long would that legitimately last? Um, so we rotate that. I mean, you do spaghetti. I'm sure your kids love mm -hmm. bow ties or pasta. We just put that in a rotation. And now you can um, take the bow ties, put them in a, um, and there's no need to do this. In a, um, It destroys the Mylar bag too. A lot of people don't know, but put it in a Mylar bag, put some, you know, some what do you call them um the oxygen it, oxygen absorbers in there mm -hmm. and seal it up but a lot of times we notice that when we put like bow ties or whatever noodles it, it sometimes it makes the bag it can compromise the bag because it, it sometimes it sucks the air out we put it too tight in there but it can last longer but you know, could a noodle last a year? Absolutely just out on the shelf pasta could last a year okay um so and all that canned food if you just recycle it and you know especially the meat we love the canned meat we love canned chicken um we don't do spam <laughs> is it spam and um yep. and potted meat and devil's meat all that we don't do that but we do have canned chicken canned turkey uh, and we love that uh and Mixing that, then mixing that with some of your freeze dried food because a lot of freeze dried food don't come with meat and chicken in it. And then we do have a lot of freeze dried meat and chicken, but we we've started canning. Uh, we haven't canned meat um, yet, but we've canned green bean, all kinds of green beans, corn, not corn, um, carrots. We've canned a lot of different things. We need to can meat though. Is there is there someone um, within PrepperNet that's like the canning kind of guru? That they're just they're just we have so many it. people oh yeah we have so many people that can do that it's crazy so you know at our prepper net meetings we we have some of the we have experts in every field so you can go to raleigh and there's five ten experts in canning so canning is the great thing about that and within the prepper net network and all the meetings if you go to one of our meetings there's a there's five, 10 experts on just about any subject matter you want. I mean, if you want to talk about guns, I mean, we, we in the Charlotte group, we probably have 20 experts. You're talking about canning food, essential oils, you know, raising chickens. That's the great, that's why people need to get involved so they can learn about all this, you know, come to a prepper net meeting near you. I mean, we got a, a hundred cities that we're, we're in and um, there's meetings going on all the time, but I would say in Charlotte, uh, we had a lady named Elemental. We have Amber. We have, um, I, I know uh, um, Beth cans a lot. Uh, I, I I do canning, uh, so we have a, a, a ton of people that do do canning. And it's easy. It's e it's easy, um, but if you, if it's done wrong, you can die. But yeah. very very. I mean, it explode, I mean, right? We we always <laughs> say that, but I've never heard anybody dying from it. So. Just I'd be the that guy. Yeah, I'd be that guy. You know, <laughs> uh, that's interesting. Uh, it, it's it's um, yeah. It's but, like the more I learn, man, the more I'm like, oh my gosh, I have I have so much more to learn. Like, but here's another thing: incredible. it's not just the food. You got to have food with all with freeze dried food, grains, beans, and rice. Man, you have to have water, tons of water. Because mm -hmm. uh, you know when you put um, free, you know the freeze dried in there, you put water and it just soaks it up. That's what it does. It rehydrates it. And so two things you need is water. So you got to store water. Water's it's very easy to store. You can get just make sure you get food grade 50 bar 50 gallon barrels of water or and and just a little Clorox. Put a little Clorox in there and it will or the keep pool it, shock. The pool shock or Clorox mm -hmm. to keep it clean. And um, then if you have a pond or a lake, you got to learn how to filter the water. But water is key. Do, do you treat the treat with pool shock or before you you seal it up or do you treat it after or both? But you do it before. OK, absolutely. Do it before, before you seal it, it up. Will, it will kill all the, you know, whatever, you know, that's floating in there. And you can do it after as well. Okay. And so we usually, we have a filtering system. We'll probably, we put the, we don't assume that the water is a hundred percent clean. So we also will um, purify it as well, either okay. going through a filter or maybe boiling it. And so that's another thing. 
So the last thing, let's say the grid's down three months out and you're hungry and you want to eat, you can go out in your backyard and take some logs and put on a fire and build a fire so you can boil water. No, that's a calling signal. Signal. Yeah. You're going to signal to everyone. Mm -hmm. So what you do, the couple ways you can do that is take like um, um, alcohol and use it like an alcohol stove because it's very clean. But I don't even recommend that. I recommend getting an all-American sun oven. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and put it in the sun. Let the sun cook your food. It's perfect. You can do bread and all that, but a sun oven. Or get some kind of very clean, like a propane stove as well, or mm -hmm. natural gas. If you're natural gas, it will probably be working for a while. But you've got to heat the water up or and... Just eating cold food all the time will just get just crazy. So you got to heat it up. So a good way to do that is propane. I wouldn't recommend, you know, you know, building fires because everyone in the world is going to know. They're going to look for you. They know if you got fire, you got something going on. Okay. <clears throat> Goodness, man. That, that's a lot. So, yeah, we, we jump from supply chain to how to store it, uh, store a, a bunch of food here. I know this, this is awesome. The, um, is there any websites that you'd recommend to like for folks that would just want to go on there and say, here's a, you mentioned that one, it was like one year of food. Um, but any other websites that, that would recommend, here's some items that you should start getting at the grocery store right. now while they're still here. Mm -hmm. So, um, there is a book, and it's, I think it's put out by the um, LDS. Um, I don't know the name of the book. Um, I see that Beth is getting ready to text me the name of the book because I can see her in the green room. Um, but it's, it's an amazing book. And it's one of the best books you can buy. So the Mormons have been being, you know, preparedness and forever. And they have literally uh, almost... It's called the, oh, yeah, it's the LDS Food Storage Manual. Thank you in the green breath. And, and it's an amazing book. And it has all the information, what you need to store, the calculators you need and everything. And it, it's a good start. I would say for people starting out, though, just take your pantry and double it, triple and it. Double it then triple it. And, and, and I mean, because... That will take care of 90% of all disasters. If your power goes out for a month, you still have food. Now all you need is a way to get water and cook it. Okay. And um, so I would get one of them 500 gallon totes. Have you seen them? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's uh -huh. It's almost um, caged in metal, almost yes. around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then buy, just keep buying Lucky Charms. And, and just pour in, in. That's all you need is just pour it in there and, and get Betsy, your little Betsy, your little cow, and you're good to go. <laughs> rainwater. I mean, would you um, capture rainwater for sure? Absolutely. Yes. But okay. you, you have to filter rainwater. I mean, um, but what happens with the rainwater, usually if it goes on like a an asphalt type of roof, there's pollutants in there. You got to get out. There's bird crap. Imagine even if it's a tin roof, birds poop all over the tin. The water washes it down into your rainwater. So treat that like pool. Not, I mean, like pond water. Okay. okay. You got to treat it like it's not. I mean, now you can use that for your garden or whatever, really safe. But you just got to treat that that is not clean water to drink until you go in there and do some stuff with it. So, um and then you got to have water filters, you know, you know Sawyer, um, Life Straw, what's um, Berkey's. I mean, there's a ton of different okay. types of water filters. Uh, <clears throat> there's one I just picked up. It was called the, uh, I think it was literally called the Survival Water Filter. Um, super slick and it had the pump to it, right? So you could drop mm -hmm. the hose down if you were, if you were too, you were high up and you needed a, really drop a hose down you mm -hmm. can you can drop there and just just pump the water right up uh and that thing was great i mean i had the kids using it in the whole line and it, it it was it was awesome i would say make sure you also get a family one because you could buy a, a a life straw and everybody thinks they're good but 
The only way you can get water out of a one of them nineteen dollar life straws if you you literally got to suck the water out and then spit it in a cup mm-hmm. if you're gonna cook with it. That's I don't like that way. <laughs> so you got to make sure you can filter the water without having to suck it through the through it so it can go and it can be clean. It doesn't go through your mouth or whatever. So get a what it's kind of, kind of like a family style. Um, water filter um there's there's one called we used it and we were in georgia my um you know the wild man my 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 mentally challenged friend that was out there <laughs> he uh he brought i think it was called it was called a platypus but i think it was three or four liters and essentially okay. you get a um where the water goes in and then it filters out and goes to the to the clean uh, bag essentially it looks like a, a giant iv bag i mean that's what it looks like and you just mm-hmm. hang it in the tree yep and it just it gravity uh it's gravity fed and just kind of works through and uh, and then you got clean water and i think 20 minutes 30 minutes somewhere on there i remembered your your friend he wore the shortest shorts i think i've ever seen in my life for ranger man. panties they were called <laughs> ra- ranger panties. <laughs> 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 oh yeah uh, but also here here's the here's the thing make sure in your food preparedness take hard candy take anything sweet hard candy it will i mean hard candy will last decades and store it with your food and have little treats i mean because you know so every one of my mile our everyone every one of our buckets that we have that's stored with with sugar or salt or um, um, powdered peanut butter, powdered butter, powdered eggs. On the top, we take candy if it's butterscotch or cinnamon, and we put just throw them on the top, like handfuls of it. Mm-hmm. That way, when you open that, you go, "Oh yeah!" And then you can you can treat everybody with some candy because you know you need some things that's going to you know lift morale. You know, as you're eating this stuff, because some of this stuff will will get to you. Some of this, I mean, if if you don't have Beano and you don't have Pepto Bismol and you don't have uh, X, I mean, just trust me, that it, stuff comes very important. Yep. Yeah, and um, yeah, the the MREs. I think uh, I, I remember eating them in the Navy. We had them, and it was it's designed to kind of like stop you up right so you can kind of just keep going and keep going and keep going you don't need to take a break so you just eat and eat and eat you're like oh my god this is i feel awful now <laughs> this is this is not fun i've been pooped in five days <laughs> this is hor- horrendous <laughs> <laughs> well this is great this is great yeah we'll um we'll post the uh the lds food storage manual uh on the on the show notes as well. So take a look at that for, um, for folks that are listening. And then there's a couple other articles too, that we'll, we'll post out there that just kind of gives you a good idea on, um, a quick read on, on some items that you can still get at the grocery store. I mean, why you still can, that you could have, uh, within your pantry just to double up on that last for, for a period of years. Yeah. So the perfect plan is food you eat now, some freeze dry food, some grains, and then a way to grow it in the future. You just put that together. How long do you want to survive? I mean, how long do you think you'll need? I mean, if, if you think you only need six months, hey, just spread that out. And it's it's not it's it's not rocket scientist science. I mean, everyone, the great thing about what we're talking about, everyone listening to, to this eats. Mm-hmm. And they've been eating for a while. They're very experienced at eating. So guess what? Just use your knowledge you have now. Go out there with some websites. You can, you can, you know, see some, some ideas that um, people have, but it's food here. Here's the thing. And I mean this in the nicest, kindest way. You have life insurance, you have house insurance, you have car insurance, you have health insurance. The thing that can kill you the fastest is not having food and water. So why don't you have food and water insurance? You can buy that. You can have it within your hands. I mean, that's just that, that's way smarter than having house insurance. You know that ninety nine point nine percent of people's houses they never burn down. But people, small disasters will happen. You need that food. That I mean, I, you know. And I, I'll I'll take this to the Bible. The Bible says. 
Um, if a man can't take care of his family, he's worse than the unbeliever. So it, the, the Bible has a ton of parables about, hey, you, even the ant stores up food. I mean, it has all of these different things, you know, about we got to get out of this just-in-time system that we go to the supermarket every week for the food for the next week. You got to get out of that. So your goal is to go every month to get food for the next month and then food for the next month. You've got to make your stretches longer and longer apart. And that is, I mean, that's wisdom from the Bible. That's just wisdom that, you know, a lot of, we should know that. I mean, just everyone should just have that urge to see what's going on. Uh, if, the, if the bird flu comes around right now and wipes out every bird, we won't have eggs. So get some powdered eggs, get some, I mean, powdered eggs are literally exactly like an egg, especially the freeze dried ones. And so, but anyway. No, this is good. Uh, look, we got to get into a full episode on scenarios, right? Like we, we talk about this, everything we've talked about is like grid down, grid down, grid down. But what true, are true. some of the other... And we don't need to talk about it now, but I think I think this next episode you we break start, a nail. We start breaking, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something, something, right. something small, like we just had Northeast had a had a winter storm, right? Um mm -hmm. last last winter, DC had folks stranded down the highway on 995 for 19 hours. Nobody could get to them because of the snow. Right. Those are those are some small and people died, right? That people died because of that. Yep. Um, they weren't prepared. Um but the then we can start looking at like greater magnitude stuff of like what are some other scenarios that could play out in a week, uh, a month, a year. Um, I think that that would be worth exploring because um, it doesn't matter who you ask. Everybody has a different opinion on it. Like everybody right. has a different opinion on what they but think I'm, will happen next. But I'm right. But but you're right. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right, Mr. Lucky so, Charms. Well, well, I will say this, everyone. Um, hey, make sure you subscribe. Do all that. Follow us. we got some good interviews coming up. Um, we're going to interview um, one of my friends, Jonathan Hollerman. I want to interview Arthur Bradley, which is a NASA science that um, scientist that he protects all the satellites in the sky. We're going to interview one of your friends coming mm -hmm. up. Um, yeah. So, so we got some different shows coming. And um, just keep tuning in. Um, but um, what were you going to say? We need to. That was it, man. I think we'll pray, pray us out. Or you want me to pray us out or you want to do it? Sure. Go ahead. All right. All right. All right, Father, thank you very much for this time. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, it's certainly a, a strange and unusual world we live in today. Mm -hmm. um, please guide us on the path of, of prosperity and protection and taking care of our fellow our fellow man, our fellow neighbor, uh, and our family. Um, thank you for the guidance uh, in, in everything you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, and I would also challenge before we get the music going, Matthew 24, read that in the Bible. That's what's coming. Matthew 24. Hey, man, have a good week. <laughs> you as well, man. You as well. Enjoy those lucky charms. Oh, yeah. Go <laughs> Thanks get for some. listening to the Prepping Academy podcast. Preppers unite at www.preppingacademy.com. Has your data been hacked? Do you feel uneasy about the vulnerability of your personal information online? Were you involved in the Target, LinkedIn, or Microsoft data leaks? Don't know? If not, then pay attention. Join Forrest Garvin from PrepperNet for a free webinar on privacy and security. Gain insights into safe internet browsing, VPNs, crafting online aliases, secure emails, detecting if your data has been hacked, and managing passwords. Secure your spot today for this webinar on privacy and security. It's free. This webinar delves into comprehensive strategies for bolstering your online privacy. We've got you covered from fortifying your passwords to shielding your financial information and mastering state-of-the-art encryption techniques. We're offering two convenient dates to suit your schedule. Reserve your spot now at PrepperNet.com privacy. Don't let cyber threats erode your peace of mind any longer. 
Take the first step toward a safer, more secure online experience by joining us for our free webinar. Remember, knowledge is power when it comes to safeguarding your privacy. Sign up now at PrepperNet.com privacy. We'll see you there.